After the RFP boots up, the RFP will need an IP address. This can be a static IP address or can be assigned by a pre-configured DHCP server using DHCP option 224 or 43. Warning: The RFP will not get the necessary settings with a standard DHCP network. In this tutorial, I will only cover how to assign a static IP address. We'll use the configurator to assign the static IP address to each RFP. Static IP addresses are assigned by the IT group or system administrator that manages the Ethernet network. If you are not sure of what static IP address to use, check with them. The configurator is a Java application that requires that Java 1.6 or higher is installed on your computer. First, connect a PC or laptop to the same Ethernet network as your RFP. Here's a good tip. The easiest way for the configurator to communicate with the RFP is to be on the same subnet as the RFP. To launch the configurator, insert the OMM system CD and browse to the CD content in the software folder. Look for and double click on the file om underscore configurator.jar. This will launch the configurator. In the upper right corner drop down box is the NIC or network interface card that your PC or laptop will use to attempt to communicate with the RFP. I bring this up because some PCs have multiple Ethernet cards. If this applies to you, make sure you have selected the NIC that is connected to the same subnet as your RFP. Next, click on the Scan button in the top left corner. This will search for RFPs. Notice the status in the bottom left corner. Scan, Request, OK. This means it found something. If it displays Timer Expired, it didn't auto-detect any RFPs. Here are a couple of simple quick things you can check if you see the display message Timer Expired. Your PC or laptop is not connected to the same network or subnet. To troubleshoot, take the CD out of your PC or laptop and put the OMM system CD in an existing PC in the area. Then relaunch the configurator application and rescan. Another thing to check is that the RFP is not powered up. This could be because the LAN connection does not support PoE. If none of the display lights are on, try connecting the optional RFP power cable. Here is something else to check. If the RFP is not connected to the same network or subnet as your PC, or is connected to a bad network jack. To check this, try connecting the RFP to a different LAN jack. This might resolve the problem. So let's continue with the configurator. In the RFP configuration list box is the MAC address of the device or devices it found. So let's verify that the MAC address matches the MAC address of our RFP. Turn the RFP over and check the label. As you can see, the RFP MAC address matches the MAC address found during the scan. Next, click on the MAC address in the configuration list. This will select the RFP and we can begin the configuration of this specific RFP. Select the login checkbox and enter the default username and password information. The default is OMM, all lowercase, for both fields. There is a button to return the RFP to factory defaults. We will continue down to Use Local Configuration. Select Yes if you were assigning a static IP address to the RFP. Select No if you were using a DHCP server to provide the IP address and settings for the RFP. I am using a static IP address, so I will select Yes. Next, enter the RFP's static IP address. For this RFP, it is 10.70.109.152. My network administrator assigned this IP address. Enter the subnet mask, minus 255.255.255.0. Enter the TFTP server address. The TFTP server is used to provide firmware updates. If you don't have a dedicated TFTP server, you can use a standalone TFTP program that runs on your PC, in which case you would enter the IP address of the PC. That is what I am doing. Enter the TFTP file name. You can refer to the 4.0 OMM system CD. 
At the time of this release, my file names were for the RFP L35 and 36 IP RFP 3G dot DNLD. And if you have an older RFP, L32 or L34s, it would be IP RFP 2G dot TFTP. Enter the OMM IP address. The first RFP's IP address will be the OMM IP address. So I will enter 10.70.109.152. This will now be the OMM IP address. When you assign the OMM address, you are telling the system which LRFP will be running the OMM software and controlling the functions of the SIPDEX solution. When I launch the OMM web interface, this is the IP address I will use. When I add additional RFPs, this is the OMM IP address I will enter. I can also add a secondary OMM parameter to provide redundancy. I'll cover this later in the tutorial. The next field is router addresses. This is your gateway router IP address. Click on the plus sign and enter the gateway IP address. Your network administrator can give you this IP address. Before we upload these settings to the RFP, I want to add a few more parameters that are optional but very nice to use. At the top, click on Add Parameter. Then from the drop-down list, select the additional parameter. I will select DNS Addresses and click on the Add button. Notice a DNS Addresses box has been added. Click on the plus sign. Enter the DNS IP address and click on the Add button. Your network administrator can also give you this IP address. Once you have added a DNS address, the OMM will be able to support additional parameters that use server names or domain names. I will demonstrate this in the next parameter, NTP Server Name. Click on Add Parameter. From the drop-down box, select NTP Server Name. Notice I could select NTP Server Name or NTP Server Address. Since I have added a DNS address, I can use server names. So I will select NTP server name. The NTP server parameter can be used to provide an external clock reference so that your handsets will have the correct time. In the field, I will enter pool.ntp.org. Go back to the top and click on Add Parameter. Scroll down and select Country. This is used to enter a country-specific ringtone. For North America, enter 100. So that is all the choices and parameters for our initial configuration. Additional parameters can be added to meet your installation needs, such as VLAN or second OMM IP address. The last step is to send the configuration to the RFP. At the top, click on Send Config. Look at the status in the bottom left corner. If successful, it will say Sending OK. That completes the initial configuration setup. Once the RFP has a valid IP address and is communicating with the network, you will see the light turn green. The light will flash yellow intermittently. This is normal. 